13 WMAZ Morning starts now. Well, good Friday morning. It's a cold start to another beautiful day, but I have all of your Christmas forecast coming up. If you're flying, you want to be sure to check ahead. We'll tell you how Omicron might change your holiday plans. And the Fort Valley State University community is mourning after the death of one of their own. What the university is doing this morning to pay respects. Plus, former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter found guilty after she fatally shot Dante Wright at a traffic stop last year. The charges she faces as she awaits sentencing. Well, good Friday morning and a Merry Christmas Eve to you. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. Look at that Christmas tree shining nice and bright on this Christmas Eve. The time is now 6 a.m. on this December the 24th. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Wanya Reese walking out the door this morning. It's definitely feeling chilly, but hey, Taylor, it's going to be time to bust out that barbecue by Christmas because it's going to be warm outside. Oh, yeah, I, I think that we can maybe even just throw it all away. Now, don't take my advice because it may get a little cold later on, but for the next seven days, you're not going to need a coat. You're not going to need maybe even a jacket. It's just going to be so warm, but for now, enjoy the nice cold weather if you're a cold weather lover because it's the last of what we'll see for a while. Right now I'm making 31 degrees, so a cold morning, but clear skies. You can even see the Christmas tree very festive there in Macon. Across the area doing much of the same. 34 degrees now in Warner Robins, 34 in Sparta, 34 in Milledgeville, 43 down in America. So starting to warm up a little bit and take note of the direction of the winds. Because we have southerly flow in the picture, we're going to warm up nicely today. So for your Christmas Eve, temperatures will rise to the mid 60s to upper 60s, may even get some 70s sprinkled in for today. I'll have more on your Christmas forecast and the end of the year forecast coming up. Thank you, Taylor. Americans are trying to avoid bringing COVID-19 home for the holidays, waiting in long lines for a test. But for some, COVID has already put a lump of coal in their stocking. My brother just got diagnosed with COVID-19 like last week, so he's got to stay home until past Christmas. Adding to the uncertainty, United Airlines canceled more than 100 flights today due to COVID-19 related staffing shortages. Delta, JetBlue and others have also canceled flights. Early studies suggest Omicron causes less severe illness than other variants, but experts say the unvaccinated are still at risk. Three people sit in jail this morning in connection to a deadly shooting in Baldwin County last month. The shooting happened in the early November at the Southwood Mobile Home Park on Vincent Highway. Deputies say they found 21 year old Javon Jackson shot several times. He later died at the hospital. Deputies arrested 24 year old DeAndre Alexander, 19 year old Gary Ante Ivy and 17 year old Devon Boyd. Each faced murder charges. There is no bond set for them at this time. Well, flags fly at half staff right now on the campus of Fort Valley State University after a student was shot to death this past weekend. Investigators say Myasia Brandon's father shot and killed her before turning the gun on himself. This all happened this past Sunday in Myasia's hometown of Boiling Springs, South Carolina. According to Fort Valley State University, Myasia was a junior veterinarian technician student. Fort Valley State University President Paul Jones released a statement saying, quote, Myasia was a cherished member of our Wildcat family. Our thoughts and prayers are with her family and friends during this very sad time. University flags will be flown at half staff until the sunset after she is laid to rest. This tragedy comes as the Department of Justice awarded $2 million to the university to advance school safety. It was among the largest single grants awarded across the nation. The grant is part of the Stop School Violence Act of 2018. The United Way of Southwest Georgia received nearly $1 million. Well, at some point, bills become laws, and a lot of them become the law of the land starting on January the 1st. There are a handful of bills signed by Governor Brian Kemp during the last legislative session that take effect in Georgia starting a week from tomorrow. The first is the effort to create more clarity for patients who are turning to health care providers. Insurers must now make any requirements or restrictions for prior authorization available online. That means health care providers are required to get the green light in advance from insurance before conducting or offering services to a patient. It's often the insurance way of making sure a treatment plan is medically necessary. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll explain some other bills that take effect January the 1st. All right, I want you to check out this story with me. A sweet Christmas surprise in New Orleans left a man speechless, all thanks to a community that rallied behind him in his time of need. Now, 26-year-old Chris Bergerson is a dedicated and faithful employee who works a night shift at a donut shop. In the three years he's been there, he mostly biked the roughly nine miles to and from work. 
While at work, someone stole Chris's bicycle seat. His boss posted about it online in hopes of finding the thief, and that's when the community jumped in, which started as a mission to replace a bike turned into something much bigger. Within 24 hours, complete strangers raised $6,000 for Chris, and yesterday he traded in his handlebars for a steering wheel. It's going to make things a lot easier. It's not going to be as hectic trying to find a way to and from. And if the weather's bad, I don't have to worry about it. It's really, really heartwarming. Not at all anything I would have expected. That's an amazing story. Enough money was raised to pay for the taxes, title, and insurance for a year. Some of the money came from longtime customers of the donut shop. Time's now 6.05 a.m. And, you know, we have that type of weather, honestly, where you'll be able to roll down the windows, open mm -hmm. up the sunroof, and just, you know, take a ride down 75 or down Bass Ooh, Road. and just, Bars. Exactly. Just <laughs> enjoy yourself. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a very pleasant day. But I know that some people are really, really, like, like really cold Christmases. I know. I saw that. Um, I was looking on your Facebook page mm -hmm. yesterday, and there were a couple of viewers who were like, we would like a cold Christmas. But I was like, you know, here in Central Georgia, it's a mixed bag. You no, never know what you're sure. going to get. And I don't blame them. It's wintertime. Like, why don't we have like, the cooler temperatures? Yeah. I understand. But maybe just get through one year. Last year, we had flurries. So we're getting both sides of the holiday picture. Right now, enjoy the cold weather. If you are a cold weather lover, it is definitely a cold morning right now in Dublin sitting below freezing at 30 degrees, but it's a clear sky. So enjoy it. It is a very beautiful start to what will be a fantastic Christmas Eve across the area. We're sitting in the 30s. Now Atlanta is about 10 degrees warmer than us here in Macon around 40 degrees. We're starting to get all that warmth in the picture. That green color starting to inch closer and closer to Georgia because the wind direction is coming out of the southwest now. And what that means is that we'll get the influence of the Gulf of Mexico, which will warm us up throughout the day. So all these 30s, you can kiss them goodbye as we head into the rest of your day because we're going to warm up nicely to these 60s for your Christmas Eve. Plenty of sunshine, a few winds, but nothing really to worry about for that. Just a beautiful day for your Friday. Now, if you're going to celebrate all the Christmas spirit and stay in Macon, you can go see the Christmas lights on Main Street. It's a perfect night to do so. Around 6 p.m., we'll still see parts of the sunset. Temperatures will be in the mid 50s. We're going to stay warm overnight. So about 8 p.m., temperatures will still be in the low 50s, and that's as low as we'll probably go is the low 50s for tonight. So about a 20 degree temperature swing from today's lows to tomorrow's lows. So a very pleasant night. No rain in the forecast for them. For your Christmas day, the forecast everybody has been waiting for. It will be a very warm day. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 70s across the area under mostly sunny skies, so a very warm Christmas. But again, enjoy it while it lasts because it will last a while. We're going to start a warming trend as we head into the next few days to end 2021. This chilly air is going to get pushed out by the upper levels of the atmosphere. That's because we have a high pressure system located to our south. It's going to start creeping more and more to the east as we head into the weekend. What a high pressure system does at the upper levels of the atmosphere, it creates a warming trend. So the warm air is going to sink into central Georgia and we're going to have temperatures well above average. We're talking 70s, upper 70s, and maybe even flirting with some 80s in the southern portions of our viewing area. Thankfully, we'll, we'll stay dry for your Monday and into Tuesday. We could maybe see a few sprinkles. Otherwise, it's going to be a partly cloudy day. Now, heading into the midweek, that's when we start to introduce rain chances. We have a system trying to set itself up just to our north. So we're going to keep an eye on this and see how this really plays out because we could have some wet days ahead heading into the rest of the year for Wednesday and Thursday, maybe even into Friday, but Thursday looks to be our best day to see a rain chance. But otherwise, enjoy the sunshine while it lasts because we're going to have it for the next five days. Again, temperatures in the 60s today will rise to the low 70s by tomorrow for Christmas Day, and then we're going to stay in the 70s for the foreseeable future, maybe even upper 70s and low 80s as we head into midweek. We're back after the break.